It's Totally Awesome Fishing Show time again. Happens nearly every week, I've noticed that. How about a tip for beginners from Tomo, the skipper of the Lorna Dune out of Watch It. How to make a fast, easy rig. In fact, you don't even have to make it. All you do is take it out of the packet and add water. Here it is, is this rig made up from Tomo. We couldn't do anything with the wind. So you've got a set of mackerel feathers, just standard mackerel feathers. You can cut them in half if you want. Instead of uh, six hooks, you can have, say, three. Simple mackerel fillets cut nice and neat, but notice Tomo just hooks them once. Because in a strong tide, which you get in the Bristol Channel, you do not want anything with kinks or bends in it. You want it just lying in that fast tide so it doesn't spin. So just nick your bait once. Okay, then you can see it stretches out like this. The rig's going to lay on the seabed. You can use squid. You don't have to use mackerel. Dead easy to do. So for those who don't want to tie up diff different snoods and rigs, you can put the running lead in the same place there and have the feathers just basically below the lead, as you would do normally. And there, Tomo's got four baits going straight out. Cast them down tide. The current will hopefully straighten that trace out. And here he goes. He's hooked up. What has he got? Has he caught a fish? He's caught more than one fish. He's caught... Uh, oh my God. A load. So if you want productive fishing, maybe cutting up a set of mackerel feathers is the way to go. If you just want eating fish. And of course, other species as well. Take. Yes, indeedy. There's a set of mackerel feathers baited. This time, Tomo's got a nice conger eel on there. It's a rig to go to if you are a beginner. Give it a try. A quick, easy tip for beginners, especially boat fishing, because you can go out there and it's rough and you're pitching around. You don't want to be doing all this, do you? Feeling queasy. Bang out a set of mackerel feathers. You can even cut them in half. Bait up, let it one end. Boom, away you go. Anyway, not every fishing trip does go according to plan. I know that definitely. I blank often as many times as the rest of you out there. It's just the way it is in British fishing. Anyway, here's a few clips of a trip I went to. Was it successful? I don't want to talk about it. Don't want to talk about it. Well, I'm down here at St. Aldrey's Bay Holiday Park, down here, West Somerset, in the Bristol Channel, Bristol Channel fishing. And you can see back here, that's right. I'm gonna be going beach fishing. I'll show you my combination. Oh, I stay here quite a bit, to be honest, I like it. How close is this? I'm in one of these chalets, wood chalets here. Absolutely ideal for beach anglers. In fact, yesterday, the reason I'm down here, in fairness, I was, I was fishing with Tomo uh, on his 21 foot pirate and uh, fishing for big smooth hounds and we got them. I've got a tide here, down here, a little bit low, I'm a little bit early on the tide. I got up early this morning and I uh, thought I'm gonna try and squeeze three hours in. The only bait I've got is a few hardbacks, hardback crabs, screen shore cra crabs here. So I'm gonna catch nothing, 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 except, and maybe a dogfish, which would be freaky. So I've got no bait except the hardbacks. I'm going for a smooth hound off the shore. It's not a great smooth hound beach. It's not the hot spot, so they do go everywhere up the Bristol Channel. But down here, I mean, look, with a view like this, boys, accommodation up here at the top of the hill, and the stairway to heaven by Led Zeppelin going down there, it's got to be worth a shout. I am a bit early, though. One bucket of green shore crabs. And if you've got green shore crabs, you have to have, of course, like the carp anglers, a green bucket to put them in. It's no good putting green crabs in a blue bucket. They don't like it. Right, down we go. It's fun going down for the old knees at my age. It ain't so much fun coming back up, I can assure you. These beautiful flowers down here. So just while we're going down the steps, just to tell you, smooth hounds, they aren't losing me rods. Smooth hounds are an incredibly hard fighting, well, brilliant in shallow water. If you can catch them in a boat off shallow water, they go really well. Probably, probably one of the hardest fighting shorefish you can catch. In fact, I think they are. I would say they are. In Britain, they are almost like a sort of a, a tropical bonefish, except that's about as close as we can get to them here, if you catch them on the right gear. 
But the thing is, they don't take like fish baits and stuff. Ragworm, maybe squid of all want. Peter crabs, yes, but shore crabs. They go eating shore crabs. Now, anglers say, oh my God, you've got to have peeler crabs. Peeler crabs are when a crab changes its shell, shucks the old one off, and it's soft underneath. No, no I think it's the anglers that like that. If you think that a smooth hound is going to swim along and think, oh my God, I cannot eat this crab. I'm starving. I'm not eating this crab. It's not a peeler like they sell in the shops. I'm sorry, they eat crabs and everything else. They ain't getting their excessively voracious mouth. I wish I don't slip on here. So down we go. I'm just pausing slowly because I do not need to go A over T. I could break an ankle. Worse, I could break a fishing rod. Oh, this is very twee. I think this is new. Oh yes, that's me. That's very me. I would have used duct tape, but I guess cable ties will do. Man after my own heart there. Somebody obviously parked their car in the wrong place here and didn't read the tide table. So I've been here before, I've caught fish off this beach. I'm way early, normally it's touching that shingle, I don't walk down there. What I've got to watch are those stakes there. I feel... Maybe I'll go along a bit, let's go down. I normally just fish in the first sort of 50 yards. I don't want to get caught in those stakes there. Well, we did catch a thornback round that corner before. Tides coming up here. See the tides? Oh, look at this black sand at the top here. Very defined tide line here. I hope there's not going to be a load of tide in the water. I could go right under those cliffs. I'll tell you what, let's just have a walk along here. Why not indeed? It's a lovely morning for a walk. Breezy, yesterday in the boat we were out. <clears throat> My goodness me, it was breezy. 20, 25 knots. We caught fish and this is just a one shot deal. Three hours, it's probably, probably a blank. But I'm gonna try some of Tomo's just hardback crabs. I'm gonna throw them out, I'm gonna sit there. And if I do get a take, I'm almost 100% sure, 100% sure it's going to be from a smooth hound. I didn't bring a big camera because the wind in the mic, at the moment the wind's not bad. The wind in the mic oh, is a pain. Big camera's great, but it's ultra sensitive with a microphone. So it picks up everything, chainsaws, strimmers, motorbikes in the distance, aircraft, it's a bit of a nightmare. But the small one, listen, is what it is, guys, you know me. Right, rig up time. I've got a pocket full of leads, bit of line left over from yesterday, leader. I'm going to just be using a straight running ledge and I'm just going to lob it out and if I don't get anything, I don't get anything. I cannot come all the way to St Audrey's, have a high tide that's convenient for checkout time and not at least have a throw out there. I mean, I could put bait out. I have no bait, but I could. I'd probably catch doggies and stuff. But, you know, i just total smooth hound or nothing. I'll tell you what, people, I hope I've got the tides right here. <laughs> I hope I've got the ties right, and it is actually coming in and not going out. <laughs> it's a bit embarrassing, isn't it? Now the stones are dry here. What I've got to watch are those, there's some stakes way over there in the distance I've caught. It's coming in really fast, so I normally fish just over the shingle where the mud is. And at high water, I'd probably be pushed with my spinning rods to reach that shingle I've got to lose gear in here. I should try. But you can see, just down there, you can see the line of mud which is being covered virtually as we speak. Once you get to there in that pipe area, it's already cutting in here up there, so there's less beaches. So I'm on the edge of where the sand comes in. Time to rig up. Well, I've been using uh, just straight braid when I don't have a shock leader. You've got a 50 pound braid, I think, why am I putting a 50 pound shock leader on there? Well, I have noticed is if I leave this my grip lead like this just running on the braid it does wear it it doesn't it does I don't know, maybe I've lost one lead you know but I, it does wear it definitely if I'm casting a lot so I put a surgeon's loop there I've got 
about four inches to an all bright knot here and then I've got just 50 pound mono just here foot long just as you can see the lead bumps up against that and then I've got my trace and then I think it's about a 6-0 hook so anybody using 50, 60, 70 pound braid just be aware there could be wear there you could put a sleeve on another swivel but whichever's there going up and down might wear it so um, you know if you're just lobbing out probably won't matter but it's worth looking every now and then that's just my way of doing it you know great simplicity itself a straight running ledger and one green shore crab just hooked through the shell let's get him out there so straight running ledger i'm not clipping it up or anything like that there's my leader one green shore crab ready to be posted out there just a straight lob if he comes off i have some more I think I'm just about right for getting out there. Now I know here was the line to the beach, so if I can get about 60 yards out without getting a booty, out goes Mr. Crab. Uh, oh, that'll do, that's okay. I know I'm on sand there, you see, I know I'm on sand. Because the further I get pushed up the beach, I won't be able to cast so far with a big crab dragging in the air but I can do this with a walk back technique I'm walking it back with a bail arm open as the tide comes in I'm going to leave it out as long as I can my problem being if you do see with a hard back crab if you see bang bang just give it five minutes bring it in because they'll crush the crab off and you're sitting there with a the bare hook that is the downside if you had let's say squid and lugworm wrap you had bait on that you elasticate it on you're obviously going to be having some form of bait out there even if you miss a bite or don't see a bite but with these hardback grabs the hound just crashed them I mean we're probably blank but at least I'm trying and set the drag boys because these these hounds can run big and I do not need a new rod I've had these 40 years now Beautiful. My goodness me, what's that up there? Blue sky? Whatever's going on? Well, crab number two about to be posted out there. My goodness me, sunshine and a flooding tide. The wind has gone down from 20, 25 knots yesterday to about five. Let's see if we can get this kitty out there. I won't go so far. And I'm on sand. This rod, by the way, is a Conaflex. I don't know, I think it's called a Super Bass. So it was a bass rod. 12 foot long, two piece, mostly glass. There might be a bit of carbon in the tip. Quite soft and forgiving. Normally throws three, four ounces, and I'm lumping out five. But listen, I've had it years. I don't think you buy them. You might pick them up second hand. It's just a rod, you know, it's 40 years old, 35 certainly. Still throwing leads, still catching fish, well, we hope. Oh, oh. Especially a smooth hand. And I've never caught a smooth hand on this one, I don't think. It will bend if we get one. My only misgiving is the amount of weed on the beach. But I'm here now, I'm committed. I can do no more except try. I'm hoping I, I can keep my rods out there without marching this robust up and down. And I've got my spinning rod from yesterday, which I normally only ever use for close in fishing. Just a chuck out to try and pick up anything, dabs, flounders, or whatever. It's got Namura on it. It's the old. Storm Force 9 for a spinning rod. Even uh, Tom on the boat said yesterday he quite liked the action of this one. Like there's slight kinks in this line. So what I do is I, you see where it's coiled up? It's, uh, I hold the hook in the bend. Be careful when you do this. You really do it before you tie the hook on, but this is how I do it. I've got the swivel. 
I pull it across, backwards and forwards across my knee like this, under tension. If you do it too fast, your trousers will combust and you'll be running down the beach in flames. So you can burn the line and you can also burn your trousers. I'm doing it under tension. Another way of doing it is get if two of you just hold it and stretch it like this under pressure. Watch. Six, seven, eight, nine and three quarters. Look, lovely. Limp, straight and ready for a crab. I've got a smaller crab on this one people just because it's a softer rod and I won't be able to get it so far and there'll be less, less drag through the air. i just chuck this one out and it's going to be fishing fairly close obviously. So this is a pulley panel wig. As you can see there's the lead, it goes up and down, maybe you see this, like a pulley. And then you just clip in your hook just here. And that disengages on impact with the water or indeed earlier. Good old hardback crabs. Hardback crabs is, I think, maybe even boat fishing with them, I've had, say, one thornback ray, I think, on them. Rass love them. This size, rass will demolish all day long in deep water off the shore. No shock leader. This is, uh, I think it's Sidewinder Silk 50. Straight all the way through. It's a heave ho. Oh, Christ, that went a long way. Wowee. If that disengages, I'll be happy. Walk it back, bail arm open. Just don't want to move the lead. Just going to walk it back. And I'm going to sit back, chill and relax. This one, being a shorter rod, I just put in this shotgun holder here. It's a piece of plastic waste pipe tube. I just taped. I just hope the line doesn't get buried. That's a normal colour of sidewinder silk. That must have been a long cast. I've never seen that colour till it, since it was on the spool with brand new. Right, I know what I will do. I'm going to look for a couple of bigger boulders for this. Yes, there's one. I have been on this beach before and had a congwheel take the rod out the rest. And I'll tell you what, when a smooth hound hits, you will know the bite. If you don't know the bite, you will be going to the tackle shop locally and watch it and purchasing a brand new rod, reel and end rig. I do like walking along tide lines like this. Look at all the different shapes of driftwood. I mean, look at this bit that's been washed up. Somebody's probably cut it and dumped it off the cliff. That's rotted off. Just, just a natural piece. Well, what, what, what a piece. I could build a body out of that, couldn't I? There's the legs. Or the other way up, it could be two arms. Or it could be the yoke for a catapult. My goodness me, that would make a catapult, wouldn't it? Keep an eye on those rods, Graham. There's the tide line. This is what concerns me. All this weed. And there's bits down here as well. This northwesterly has been blowing here, straight into the bay here. It's dropped now, but it would have stirred all the weed up and that's going to float in on the tide. No deck chair, okay. Ah, 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 ah. What the hell is that yellow thing up there? Oh my God. I've got a sun, I've got a blue sky. So there's a bait people in here. Check those puppies out. <laughs> they would attack, launch an attack on you. Plenty of crabs there. I'm just going to get a bit of wet seaweed. I'm going to take these home and I'm going to freeze them. And they will be working their way out to high sea drifter or wrasse fishing, one or the other. I've got to keep them cool. Temperature is critical, so I'm going to probably put them back up here in the shade. But I'll get a piece of this, uh, wet this weed down, a little bit of salt water, and they won't go unless just keep it. Do not put fresh water in with crabs. If they were kept, if they were kept in smaller containers, a little bit of wet seaweed in salt water, 
then they would last probably a week chilled in a fridge and the tip off is chappies like that red one there I'm going to show you they seem to be more aggressive look <laughs> than the green ones <laughs> look than the green ones and they're harder they're definitely harder there's another one that's going red look more aggressive the green shoreback crabs are the better ones I feel the shell is slightly slightly softer always getting tips from people pass them on to others and that's how the brotherhood of fishing continues creature comforts don't go amiss today nice comfortable seat with flat rocks one thing I will say here um, and it applies to other beaches as well when you do that walk back technique and it breaks to shingle and small stones when it's a big pounding surf I try and keep the rods quite close to the waves if you come back you've lowered the angle of the line and any big pounding waves that go boom stir up the stones and will bury your line when it's flat calm like this is fairly flat calm then I think it's a bit different then I think I can afford to keep my rods further back because the waves aren't pounding those stones so much to cover you know, your line up. But you can lose gear, I have lost gear, and obviously I will in the future. But this way you don't have to keep walking down with the tripod knowing the tide's coming in and then have to walk all the way back with it. That's the theory, we'll find out in a minute if I lose some gear. Another tip I do, is a really bad habit, is always try and put my seats right down by the rods. And then I'm craning my neck back up like this to look at the rod top. So this way I'm further back up the beach, I'm higher up the slope, and obviously I just I can look around and I'm going to see I'm always going to see a tip go around as long as I'm looking in that sort of general direction, which is unusual for me because I get bored really quickly and wander off on the beach looking for things, starting fires and whatever, throwing stones, naughty things. The two of us used to play cricket on the beach, find an old piece of driftwood cast out a load of worms, have about two overs each, and one the rods in, bait up, throw out, have another two or three overs each. If you can't do it now, it's probably health and safety. You mustn't hit stones on the beach now. And God forbid. Children, don't ever go down to the beach edge, get those flat stones and try and skim them across the waves. That's health and safety gone mad. There will be some clipboard Johnny there with his little name tag so he knows who he is, how important he is. He will be stopping you skimming so stones across the water soon. Trust me, it will be coming. What a world we live in. I think we must have had the best of it when I was a kid. Climbing trees, catapults. Naughty things? No, it's just kids playing outside, for God's sake. Now they're quite oh, just... It's Nambyville, isn't it? The whole world is Nambyville. Mustn't climb a ladder over something like six feet with two metres without having eight people to hold the ladder. Listen, if it's your place and you're climbing up your ladder and you fall off, that's your fault, as far as I'm concerned. That's how I see it. If I fall off my ladder, who am I going to sue? Me? We need a bite. We need a bite or a take. This will sound a bit bizarre, but it is so peaceful today. I haven't seen a jet go over. There's no noise. Even better, there's no people. It is so quiet, all I can hear is that wave just murmuring against the shingle as it comes in. And with a blue sky and a bit of sun coming out, as daft as it sounds, it makes me, reminds me of when I used to go fishing off the shore in the Sea of Cortez and uh, the Pacific Ocean, fishing for rooster fish and jacks and stuff like that. I mean, some places in the world where there's no people, the Seychelles, I went to the Amarantes, go bone fishing off on my own, just go fishing on your own at dawn and waiting for the sun to come up. It was absolutely magic. Don't seem to get it nowadays. We can tell that I've had no bites because I wound in, the crab's still intact. One was gone but it could have just been crushed off by another fish. Uh, the others I've put on because I'm getting pushed back are more likely to cast on the edge of the stones. I don't want the crabs crawling under the stones, I'm not going to catch anything. But generally we just lash the legs together. Now, you can tell also, I've got slightly sidetracked, boys. 
because when you're on the beach, I wish I brought some food with me. I've got one of these going on the driftwood. I was experimenting just to see which was the best starting fuel. Wow, don't shoot, don't shoot. I'll pay, I'll pay. Which is the best starting fuel? We've got a really good fire going there. So that'll see me through my little session here of a couple of hours or so. Just something about a fire, and I'll tell you what, boys, it's hot. I suppose I could put the crabs on the fire. If you were in a survival situation, you would be cooking those crabs on hot stones, I can assure you. Probably lovely as well. But for the present time, nothing happening. I can't say I'm surprised. It was a bit of a, you know, a cast out there. It was a bit of a throw in the dark. But the crabs were, you know, not uh, not weeded up. I did think weed would be the... Is my hair or not? This piece of my hair has come off. What the... <laughs> That's my toupee done. Where's my hair burn? Obviously, I put it all out with water. I get my bucket and put some water on it. Nice to have a barbecue. I could cook on that. I could definitely cook on that. It's lovely and hot. So as I get pushed further up the beach, there's more chance of crabs crawling under the stones. So I just lash with bait thread their legs together, and I stop them crawling under stones and hiding. We use that boat fishing. Everybody does. Everybody's good anglers. Tend to know you know the way to present the bait. And if you have a problem with the bait, then you have to leave. Yeah, no problem. To alleviate that problem. It's clouded over but the wind is down. If I don't catch anything it's still nice to be out here on the beach, little beach fire going. Got a flask of tea I made up in the chalet before I came down and even better on the way out lunchtime they got their own restaurant here in St A's. I can go in and get a pizza. That's what I call survival and a half a beer. It does look indeed like Billy Blank is coming to see me today. Can't be helped. We're just about to uh, quarter to 12, so I've given it three hours. It's just nothing. Well, what's happened is they're neap tides. I can stand in the Bristol Channel here. They have huge rise and fall of tide over 30 feet. So a difference of, say, a couple of feet in height means a big distance up here, coming up and down. But being a neap tide, well it's not neap, but it's on the way to neap, it doesn't come in and out very fast, so it stays there. I'm surprised I haven't had a take, but very often you know fish do like a lot of movement in the water, which is the big tides, the spring tides, some people call them long tides, where they come in and out a long way, and it stirs stuff up a bit. Anyway, here's something of interest. Putting the fire out, I heard a big crack. Look at that crack that is blown apart here. That big slab of rock, that's how hot it gets with the stone. So if you have beach fires, watch out for pinging stones, but you can see there must be moisture in the stone and that must be what cracks it. If there's a fire stone expert out there, tell us, but I imagine it's the expansion of the water or moisture maybe trapped inside the stone or some historic prehistoric gas that's inside there that expands with the heat and then blows apart. Put it on the comments page. What makes vast stones like that explode. I know it's expansion. The other chap is winding in over there. The same as me. Absolutely nothing. And he is on bait. I can see like worms. It looks like he's using worm there. So it's very unusual. I'll give it another 30 minutes. Call it a day I think. Now around here is something interesting. You can see here the big ravine has been cut down through here by the water. I don't want to go too close. That's a bit of an overhang that one there. But aside from being extremely pretty you can see it's washing down all the way I'm mentioning this because you think hang on a minute it goes down here which indeed it does it's coming out of the land there out of the cliff 
rushes down, all fresh water, and disappears. It's bone dry here. But what it's done is sink subterranean underneath the beach. I'm going to mention this for a reason. Those Irish fishermen will know what I'm talking about. Because down here, I'll climb right down the beach. There is the wet mark and there is the river, or stream as he called it, coming out, look, just here. Just down there. Look, wet. I've just, I've discovered water. I invented the wheel earlier on in Mike's uh, totally awesome outdoors show. I invented the wheel, fully patented, Then I made a wheelbarrow up in pallet wood. Right, now this stream goes all the way down here and runs in there. Now years ago, when we used to fish island surf beaches, it was standard practice to look for a freshwater stream running into the beach and you would fish out there for bass. Nobody really seems to know why. Whether the sand eels came in that area because they like the freshwater, whether the bass like the freshwater, nobody really knows. It is a bass feature. When I say a hot spot, it's a feature. So from there, up in the cliffs, if I had noted that earlier, trust me, I would have come down here and walked another 150, 200 yards down the beach and thrown out here just in case. If I come back, and I'm sure to come back to St Audrey's and have a go with bait, I will walk down to this. I have noted that mark because I've never noticed it before. I think, guys, time to pack up. Anyway, it's a little tip for you there. Freshwater streams running into beaches are generally accepted as a good bass holding feature. Well, there's a few tips in there anyway. Listen, I didn't catch anything, as I told you. I do blank, but it was just a little three hour session I had tagged on after fishing with Tom Oyle in the boat the previous day. Listen, if the tide's good, I've got to fish that tide, as everybody should do, fish the tide. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show this time. We'll see you again. Friday is generally a full on fishing day. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button, TA Fishing, TA Outdoors, hit that little notification bell, otherwise you will never know when my films are going up, because half the time, I don't know when I'm putting them up either. We'll see you guys next time, and hopefully, big rods.